This conference will now be recorded. I'm here, everyone. I'm just, uh, <laughs> hi, Lily and Jeff. I'm just finishing up my dinner, so I didn't, I turned my video off for a second. <laughs> You're muted. I can't hear you, Jeff. The bonus of the internet. Uh, so what were you eating that we should be jealous about? I'm eating um, uh, chicken masala that I made a couple nights ago. Nice. Good. It's really good. But I just, I the come other, from another benefit of virtually meeting is you can eat while the meeting's going on. Or <laughs> just prior. And, and just tell, the, just watch. What? <laughs> just tell everyone gets here. No, I turned my camera off so no one has to watch me eat. <laughs> okay. We had a way to tell her when it was six o'clock. Um, yeah, I don't have to do anything. Hello, everyone. Hello. Well, you know, Hello. Pushing buttons. <laughs> okay. I'll wait till everyone's situated and then we'll call the meeting to order. And Jeff has asked that I make a statement tonight saying that we are connecting. Conducting the meeting of the regular monthly meeting of the Village Board of Trustees by video conference according to the New York State guidelines um, for this uh, coronavirus crisis. Is there anything I should add to that, Jeff? Um, you may you should probably address when and if the public will be permitted to interact at the meeting. <clears throat> Uh, public comment may be uh, allowed. Um, we do not have any public hearings tonight, but we have made a habit of allowing public comment uh, during our budget discussions. I believe, I don't know, Dorothea can fill us in on this. I'm not certain what the status of the public hearing for the pub is. Um, I have reached out to the owner of the pub and unfortunately he didn't turn a call from a couple days ago and I was unable to get through to him today. His phone's not answering. So 
Um, I'm going to. That public hearing was left open. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm I not quite sure what to do now that he's not been in communication with the clerk to tell us what his desires are. I mean, we could leave it open again until the next meeting, presumably, Dorothea? Yes, you could continue it again till May. I'm not sure when the event was supposed to take place. And I'm not even sure, you know, I, I think what, that's probably the safest thing. Dorothea, when's our next meeting? Your next Dorothea, meeting when's is our next meeting? May 12th. Let me confirm that. Yes, May 12th. I have a hard time believing the state would be open for business before May 15th. Okay. So um, I, I would suggest when we get to that agenda item, we could just continue it to the April 12th meeting or the May 12th meeting. I'd be comfortable with that, but it's right. a board decision. Yep. Sounds acceptable. Okay. Um, first, we need a, a, a motion to call the meeting to order. Uh, I'll make the motion. Do I have a second? second. I'll second. Trustee Lanfear. Oh. Do we want to give, oh, there's Renee. Okay, sorry. Okay. I've been call. here. I was finishing my dinner. Okay. Trustee Keating? Uh, Keating, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Um, Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Okay, Trustee Galusha, can you move your microphone closer to your mouth? You're a little muted there. This seat. No, no. The, your mic piece. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay, motion passes. Okay, um, first item we have is any conflict of interest disclosures? I do not. No. I have nothing to disclose. Dusty Lampier, I do not. Trustee Keating. Trustee Keating, I do not. And Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, I do not. Thank you. Okay, first item is the treasurer's report. Hi, everybody. Um, first for, hi. The first thing on the agenda for myself is not the vouchers for approval, but for the resolution that I need. Last, uh, last time when we met, uh, the board had approved some work to be done on Stonegate Lane, uh, relining the infrastructure out there and had accepted a quote from ScanX for a contractual cost of 35,700. Uh, since this money was not initially budgeted and it was an unanticipated cost, uh, I am asking the board to have a motion to move the appropriated monies from the fund balance and a increase the line expense G8120.4 to cover the cost of the uh, invoice. And this is coming from the sewer budget um, where the fund balance is very high and there's no worries and eight weeks to the end of the year. This is I'll make a motion Lampier. to expand the sewer budget to cover the unbudgeted and unanticipated costs for the required sewer lining installment due to infrastructure age on Stonegate Lane. Contractor for the project to Scanex, contractual cost is $35,700. Monies to be appropriated from fund balance for $35,700 and to increase the budget line for this expense. Line G8120.4 contractual in the same amount um, to cover this cost. Do we I have a second? I cannot second it. I have a comment, please. Yep, go ahead, Lily. Um, I didn't realize this was going to be on the agenda, and so I would have at the beginning of the meeting um, called attention to the fact that I will recuse from this um, vote because I uh, of appearances of the impropriety because the owners are, are friends of mine. So uh, I will be recusing from this vote for that reason. Understand. 
Thanks, Lily. Uh, would I'll someone else would like to make a second? Yeah, Keating second. Thank you, Dan. Um, I'll ask for a vote. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee, oh, I'm sorry. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. All right, now to the business of approving the bills. I have forwarded to you also a revised abstract. The abstract includes the uh, invoice for Scanix for 35,700, which is the only change. Um, other than that, I would like to just point out that in this particular abstract, including Scanix, we are paying all the attorney bills that we had left outstanding. Uh, so that is invoice number, I mean, uh, voucher number 624. 627 and 630. Uh, Mary, does that include, did they, thank you uh, for putting that all together. Does that include the one that they were going to resend with the adjusted rate? They they said they were going to send that in direct to you. It didn't yes, come they, through me. Yes, it, okay. yes, they did. And yes, it's included. It clears sure. up everything that I have other than the Hodgson bills. Yeah. Did the Hodgson bill arrive? Yes, I forwarded it to you last uh, time we met. It was prior to the meeting. But I didn't see it in the budget it, it, for year to date actual. Because we didn't pay it yet. Ah, okay. In order for anything to post into any of those line items, uh, they have to be approved first okay. and posted yeah. in that month. Okay, so there they are. There's a lot of them. Yes, there are. Yeah, I didn't see that. Yeah, okay. I have re reviewed the vouchers. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to authorize payment of the vouchers? I haven't reviewed those yet. And oh, so the, the vouchers and rest for the vouchers? No, no, no. We're just talking about the abstract that's before you. Hots and Ross bills are not on the table for approval this evening. This is the normal monthly set of, of, of bills. Gotcha. So what, what we have before us in the packet is what we're Correct. talking about. Okay, and, thank you. Right, for a total of 52,296.10, which includes this invoice from Scanex. Um, can we double check, make sure we have everybody muted? This one, caller number two, is not yet <laughs> muted. Yep. Yeah. Adam. I'll take care of it. Okay. Thank you. Art. Yeah, everybody should be muted now. Okay, I'll I'll second the motion on the um on the payments, on the vouchers. Thank you. Dorothea, would you call for a vote, please? Absolutely. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere abstain again because Scanex is on that abstract. Okay. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Excuse me. Trustee Stetzer? <laughs> Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Um, with that, my portion of the uh, treasurer's report is done other than moving into the final budget. Okay, Are we'll we... move on to minutes. Um, minutes from the village board meeting, the budget meeting of uh, February 11th, 2020. Give me a second. I'm trying to find the file. I just closed it by accident. I have no additions for the February 11th minutes. Desktop. I don't. The, the only thing we're missing in those minutes is uh, the, who's present at the minutes. Normally, we do put that at the top of the page. 
For some reason, it's not on that page. No, it's there. Um, so, it is. Okay. Oh, you know what, Bob? When yours was printed, it missed that first page. Okay. Mine's the same. Yes, okay. no, it is there. Uh, oh, it's printed on the back of a sheet. That's why I didn't see it. Got oh, it. okay. Sorry okay, about that. Would someone like to make a motion to approve? Do, uh, can we just do them all at once, or do we need to approve each, each one? Uh, What's the Dorothy, I think what? it's preferable to do each set in case okay, there's a great. change to any set. So this okay. way, because there's some that we might be not be able to have everybody vote on. That, that's okay. right. That's right. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion for February uh, 11th. 11th. Do I have a second? Second. Dorothy, a vote. Uh, Trustee Keating. Keating, abstain. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. That motion passes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February 18th, 2020. Do I have a Trustee second? Lam Lamphere, second. Okay, Dorothea, could I ask for a vote? Trustee Keating. Keating, abstain. Trustee Lamphere. Aye. Mayor Lampton. Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. Move to the minutes of February 25th, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve. Second, Keating. Wait, I have an addition to this one or okay, a, go a ahead. change. Uh, go um, ahead. In the discussion about the crossing guard, um, the reason was uh, not because we needed to uh, involve the consultants, but because we were going to um, pursue other recommended alternatives first. Correct, correct. And we didn't have, we didn't believe we'd have the budget either, but so I don't, that's the way I remember that discussion going. I just wanted to reflect it correctly. I, I agree with your comments, Renee. Okay. Right. What page Thank is you. that on? That is on, let me see if I can find it. Sorry, I put them on a note. Just so I can. Um, I believe, okay, I'll find it. Oh gosh, where is it? Um, the 25th, give me a second. I'm sorry, everyone. It's I should 11 have put or which, 12 of the packet, if that um, helps. Yeah, I just wrote February 25th change, crossing guard. So let me see if I can do it. There are only two pages. So. Um, it's it's right there on the first page of the notes. It's right after the first motion. It says the board review, review oh, got the. It. Okay. Thank you. Sorry about You're that. Welcome. That's okay. I should have written what page it was on. Okay. We ready for roll call? Yep. Trustee we, Keating. Do we need oh, a new motion with those changes? On. Just a uh, motion to include correction. Okay. Yes. Okay, Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of February, February 27th, 2020. Do I have a second? That's Lamphere, second. second. <laughs> I think Any Renee comments? got it. Okay, call for a vote. Trustee Keating. Keating, abstain. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 5th, 2020 at 4.30 p.m. Do I have a second? Second, Keating. Thank you. Vote. Trustee Keating. Uh, Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. 
I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of March 10th, 2020. Could someone second this? I have a, a change to this as well before we do that. Uh, Go ahead. Page, page four, change police to sheriff department. Good catch. It's in uh, on page four in the member item. Got it. Okay, awesome. That's it. Thank you. Do we have a second? That's our second. Roll call. Yes. Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. I'll make a motion to, oh, that's still March 10th, sorry. Well, there's March 10th budget there too, Bob. Oh, was I, that I, March 10? There, Did, the one you just approved was the regular meeting for March 10th. No, 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 you still have the budget. No, no, I'm no. sorry, I was I was in the wrong place. Can I Can I make one small adjustment to the March 10th regular meeting? Go ahead. Which page, Dan? Um, this is it, guys. This is uh, this is page top of page four. It's in the a Airbnb VRBO discussion. I definitely want it noted. We were very specific about whether the homeowner is home or not. Remember this whole discussion? We had this discussion several times. So yep. the the line that we delineated was if the if the homeowner is home and is like renting out a bedroom then they do need a special use permit. And if if the owner is not home and they're renting out their whole house, they don't need a special use permit, but they need to be part of the red, rental registry. So it captures that the homeowner would not be required to obtain a special use permit, but will be required to be a part of the rental registry, comma, if they are renting out their entire residence. It, just want to make sure we have that distinction in you're the differentiating notes. between a b and b and what a rental house is right yeah pretty much yeah okay yeah and this doesn't it, this reflects the discussion we haven't changed anything in the, the right. code or anything right. this just right. reflects at more accurately what we discussed so we don't I lose track of that was the point of the discussion in the meeting yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just don't want somebody to come across this note and and not understand that that context Good point. May, Trustee Lanfear, um, could you, uh, Dan, could you elaborate, please, on, on how you want this reflected in the minutes? Because I'm, these are the clerk's minutes, and I'm a little hesitant to change any, any dialogue or anything that she has written here because um, she's taken these from. I okay, assume this was very spent. clearly a part of this. Was sorry, Lily. This was very clearly a part of that discussion. If you so guys want to go you, back and listen to the recording, it, it was very clearly what we talked about. So are you proposing an addendum to the to the minutes or a sentence in order for clarification? Yes. Okay. That was part of the discussion on that day so that the notes reflect properly what the discussion was. So it's a, a clause. Do you, do you want me to read that again, Dorothea? Or did you get no, it? No, I'm looking... I'm looking at it right now. I'm just trying to see how I would change that. Right after rental registry, comma, for rentals where they're renting their entire residence. Or you could put that at the beginning of the sentence. For rentals where they're renting their entire residence, comma, the homeowner would not be required to obtain a special use permit. What would be part okay. of the rental right. register. Yep. Okay. I can add that. I don't see a problem with that. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. So the budget meeting for March 10th, I'll make a motion to approve. I think we need a motion to amend those minutes because that motion was passed as is yep. without Dan's. Okay. Dan, Dan would right. you like to make a motion? Yeah. I'll make a motion to amend those minutes as dictated earlier. Is there a second? Second, stats are second. Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. 
Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Uh, we uh, just lost Trustee. No, I got Stetzer, aye. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> okay, motion right. passes. Instead of unmuting, I click my camera. <laughs> okay. Okay, 310 budget. Uh, <clears throat> I made a motion to approve. We need a second. Second. Trustee All in favor? Vote. Trustee Keating. Uh -oh. Dan, I can't hear you. Sorry, I have one addition to this. Um, in the paragraph, Trustee Keating provided the board with a proposal to reduce the tax increase by not filling open positions in the village office and DPW staff, as well discussed whether it's possible to outsource the treasurer's function. In both cases, we said no to that, but I definitely want to reflect that we did discuss that. Um, I believe that is actually, hold on, that's reflected in the March 12th meeting. I think the trust, the 10th, you just introduced your proposal. Ah, okay, sorry. Yep, yep. got the days confused. Then I'll make, a, I'll, so then Keating I on, on the, yes. Okay, Trustee Lamphere. Lanfear, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. The minutes of March 12th. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second, Trustee Galusha. Vote. Trustee Keating. Uh, Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. And then, unfortunately, I know these came to you late April 14th. Just came, I passed them to you yesterday. I'm not sure if you had time to review. I'm okay with it. I did. I. Uh, any corrections? I did not have. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of April 14th, 2020. Do I have a second? Lanfear, second. Trustee Keating. Oh. Keating, aye. Trustee Lanfear. Lanfear, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. You currently have, um, outside of the recent budget meetings, they're in all kinds of formats right now. March 17th is still finalizing and editing, so those will be next meeting. So we're very close on being caught up. Awesome. Thanks, Dorothy. Excuse me for Thank 30 you. seconds. I'm going to run downstairs and get a glass of water. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Anything from the clerk before we move to the uh, budget? Um, I'm thinking if I come up with something, I'll let you know. No, I don't have anything at the clerk session. We are gonna what I whatever else I have, I have early later in the packet. Okay. Um. I just wanted to do a little follow up to our discussion at the last meeting, and this is not to be critical of anybody, uh, but only 
uh, to make the point that we have been very thorough in overturning every stone uh, to get to a budget that balances the anticipated drop in sales tax and other revenue loss with the need to provide essential services. Um, I should also would like to make the point that most of the anticipated tax increase um, is basically there to cover the anticipated loss in uh, sales tax revenue and other sources of revenue and aid from the state that we anticipate will be down uh, significantly in the year to come. Uh, we did look at the issue of furlough in detail. Um, so there's a few, few points that I just want everyone to be aware of. Um, if, if we furloughed the clerk, uh, we would have to pay unemployment and we would also have to pay uh, the clerk's salary um, because she is an appointed official. Under civil service requirements, layoffs have to be done by department with part-timers first and then then after that it has to go based on seniority <clears throat> so in that scenario in the scenario that we talked about briefly at the end of the last meeting if we had a zero percent tax increase we would have to lay off mike sophie and linda and then we would also have to lay off brett joan and we would not be able to hire either the vacancy in the DPW or the treasurer position in the village office. Uh, the other thing that we found out is the village, in addition to having to pay, because we don't normally pay into unemployment until someone is let go, or even, even, even if they leave for merit reasons, we still usually have to pay unemployment as a municipality. But the village also is required to pay interest on a daily basis for the unemployment it owes. So the savings, and, and Mary has calculated them out in a, uh, a spreadsheet, are not quite what you think. The other point I would make is in the general fund, we wouldn't see the full savings because uh, most of the positions have some of the salary also coming a proportion from the sewer fund. Anything I should add to that, Mary, that I've forgotten from our discussion? No, I think you have covered it all. Do you maybe want to send that material to the rest of us, Bob, so that we can all see it? Uh, yeah, I, I think, have you, have you send that out to everyone, Mary? Does everyone have that? No, everyone does not have that. We were, were just fiddling around with some numbers earlier, but yes, I can. I'll but we'll send it that. out so everybody has, and I, I'm sorry, I thought everyone did. That's my mistake. We did. I didn't even. No worries. Think about no that. worries. <clears throat> but we were looking at that point. Uh, the only thing I could add to it is that we were looking for a reduction of expenses by $135,000 in addition to the loss of sales tax for this year. So that was a big number. And then of course we have to follow the procedure for the, the layoffs. Okay, uh, with that, any additional discussion on the adoption of the 2020-21 budget? Bob, can I interject? One thing, sure just can. for a quick quick yeah. reference, um, as per last week's discussion, uh, and I did increase the uh, Hudson line for the additional 25,000 as was suggested. I also had an additional line item under uh, special items for Hudson agreement for 32,000, which would help pay against the invoices that we currently have owing to them. This is, to work in conjunction with uh, an agreement that the board would need to make. So those two changes and uh, the addition of the revenue that's in this final budget. Okay. So Frank, Frank and Bob, have you guys come to a, um, have you guys come to an agreement with them on deferring some of the payments from this fiscal year? Um, we, we don't have a signed contract, but we have come to a conceptual 
agreement and they are fine with that. You guys maybe want to send around the details of what that is so we, we can all look at it. They're going to draw up a proposal and as soon as we receive it we will will everyone will receive a copy of it. What what are the uh what are the broad strokes on it? Do you have that the atom out handy Mary? I don't have it in front of me. Um, I also don't have it in front of me, but I can generally tell you that um, the, the bills that I have forwarded to the entire board totaled 162,000, roughly speaking. Um, of the 162,000, 62,000 of it belonged to the prior year fiscal year. 101,000 belonged to this fiscal year. Um, I think that really pretty much says it for right now. Why do we have a carryover from our last fiscal year? I that, I can't answer you that question. That is the information uh, that they had forwarded I, to I us. I can answer that question. We asked okay. uh, the previous year, we asked uh, because we were having a cash flow uh, issue at that time and several unanticipated things happened with the legal expenses. So we asked to be able to defer that and Hodgson Russ said yes. Okay, can can somebody dig up the meeting notes where we talked about that? That doesn't ring a bell at all that we had deferred payment from last year. We did. I, okay, great. Could you I dig up the meeting notes or the emails right about the end, that? But I'm sure we can we can find out where it is. Okay. Is that maybe just the email chain or something? This doesn't ring a bell at all. I didn't, I didn't realize we were carrying a balance. Mary, is that on our books in the 20... 19-2020 budget? Uh, no, because we just received those invoices. But we would have had an agreement before the budget, right? We did not have an agreement, uh, a written agreement, to my knowledge of, of that. There may be, there, uh, might have been a verbal one. I know they did talk about it. I know <laughs> that um, Chuck, Chuck Malcolm and Dan Spitzer agreed to defer our invoices. I was unaware of how much they were or what time period they were truly reflective. Hmm. But either way... Lily, um, Lily has a comment. Ahead. Yes, this would mean that in last year's uh, line item for uh, Hodgson Russ, that the $100,000 uh, figure that was projected was would have been accurate. That is correct. No, it's not. We incurred hundred and seventy thousand dollars during the year and we deferred Mary just said it was a hundred thousand so no but we incurred we were, we were the, talking uh, about last year it was i think there's 000. a little bit i think there's a little bit of confusion hold on a minute maybe i can if you incur an expense in a given fiscal year you reflect it in that fiscal year's budget and okay in 28 it's right in the budget packet that you have under law under litigation, Hudson Ross line 1420.41. Last year, we paid out to them 162,000. So okay. I do not know what that budget line was at that particular time. I'd have to go back into the budget itself to find that information out. Um, this year, we budgeted 100,000 based on the information they had given us. To date, we are for this fiscal year 101,000, so we're slightly over. Um, that's where we're standing, but we are carrying the 62 from the year prior, which, uh, when paid would go against prior year expense would not reflect against this particular budget that we are currently in. Okay. So none of the deferred payments should be in the 2021 budget. Uh, I, let me answer you that differently. We we are having currently we have $162,000 that's outstanding. Of the $162,000, we need to or the board needs to make uh, an agreement with Hudson, a written agreement with the uh, Hudson and Ross, which they agreed to do that. Um, as part of our repayment plan, those all those invoices would be in there. In that amount, it would be included in that amount. Um, I have come up with a little plan that would take care of the first portion of it out first, 
and that would go against prior year, but we would work out the rest of it somehow with um, whatever plan that the board would work out with um, with the attorneys. But we do have $32,000 that we're allocating in this final budget uh, to apply against that particular debt. Okay, so not some in, of the debt. So some of the debt. So where is the third? So we're going to carry over thirty-two thousand. Um, no, into, we are alloc We are allocating two th thirty-two thousand in the twenty twenty-one budget to pay the hundred sixty-two thousand dollar debt. Okay, and will that cover all of it? Is is are there other? See, it, we just got a whole pile of bills at the exact moment when we have to finalize this. So we're kind of flying a little blind here. That is correct. We did get them just now, but they're all going to go out on an agreement, an agreement that will be again revisited in, at the end of June to see where we are standing at the end of our fiscal year here to see where our fund balance is. If we are in a position where we can pay uh, the old portion of it, uh, we will pay the old portion of it, and the rest of it will go on to an agreement for the balance of it. In good faith, we are putting in an agreement. Uh, in good faith, we are making an allocation for 32000 to be applied towards that end. Um, I don't know if that's answering your question or not. It's going to have to be spread over a couple of years. We can't okay. do it all in one shot. Okay. We don't have the fund balance to be able to cover it, and uh, our income for the next upcoming year is very volatile at, at best. So we can't make any other promises, but by design of, of the uh, budget itself, we are at least allocating $32,000 to pay against that portion of the money's owing. And uh, the rest of it will have to be figured out with between the attorneys and the board. This is where it would really help to have some visibility into what our payment schedule is that Bob and Frank negotiated with them. We don't, the rest of us don't have any idea what that is. We don't know what's going to hit in 2021. We don't know what's going to hit in 20. Well, I guess it's 32,000, right? In 2021. And then well, right, we don't know 000. how much hits in 21, 22, 22, 23. So we, we are truly kicking the can down the road on these legal expenses. Right, but we are trying to With the at least. at the eleventh hour. We so are. It's least, not your fault, Mary. It's just how it's been going. I understand. I'm just trying to tell you that we are trying to address our outstanding debt with with the attorneys, and this is the best arrangement that we can possibly make at this time. Uh, yeah. The the written agreement has not been drawn up yet. That will be something that will come before. Will be. Could, could, it, could we pause up between you? both of you and and the board will agree sure. to and you will all see it. Could somebody tell me we have one hundred and sixty thousand dollars in bills. How much of that one hundred sixty will be paid out of the nineteen twenty budget? I am hoping to pay sixty two thousand out of the nineteen twenty okay. budget okay. that, we, have a, that okay. we would then apply we have... to a prior year. It would okay. not. Then we have a. But then we have call it a hundred remaining. And of that hundred, how much of that hundred is in the 2021 budget? 32,000 for right now. Okay. So then we have $68,000 that will be in some future year. Correct. That is correct. It's also possible since we put $25,000 above the estimate from Hodgson Russ that we may be able to use some of that 25,000 and pay above the 32,000 budgeted to pay in the upcoming year. We'll just have to see how we move through the year. Yeah, that's that what I was going to That's what I was going to ask uh Trustee Stetzer um if we, the line item that we have for that in the budget that we're about to approve um based on the discussions that Frank and Bob have had with Hodgson and Russ, we think we have enough in that line item budget. I mean, the line item in the budget. Are you referring to the 50,000? Yes. They originally gave me a quote for 25,000 and pending last week's 
discussions, we doubled that figure um, right. but just in case it would have run over. So if there is a run over, whatever is left above and beyond, those bills would be applied against our debt. Okay, but given that we don't have a written agreement, we're pretty comfortable living leaving that line item as is and not... We, I'm very comfortable. We, Hudson Rust has said consistently that whatever terms of the plan we need um, to not cause fiscal stress on the village, they're okay with, even if it was over five years. I think our preference is to do it sooner and eliminate mm -hmm. the liability, um, but to do it in a responsible way. And that's 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 what we've done. Okay, thank you. We also need to have the board be in, a, in an agreement for the outstanding debt prior to the end of this fiscal year. So it goes against our um, annual update document as a memo. We, we will okay. be working to get a, 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 a a detailed agreement together, which will be reviewed by the entire board and subject to approval by the entire board, hopefully before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Thank you. Our, our target really should be to do that for the first meeting in May. Uh, Lily, you had your hand up? I did. Um... Bob, I'm wondering if at some point during this budget discussion you will allow for public comment. Uh, yeah. I know it's not a public we've hearing. It, we've set the precedent, and especially in the uh, video conferencing thing that we are, I think we should be consistent. And if people want to speak tonight, they should be given an opportunity. Bob, if I okay. can, I also have three um, rec three pieces of correspondence I've received email to read into the record. Uh, I would uh, say go ahead and read them, Dorothea. Okay, you want to me to do that, or you want me to let the speaker that requested from the chat speak first? Why, why don't you read the uh, written things first and get that out of the way? Okay. Do we do we make a motion and then second it first and then have the discussion? Is that how we do it? It's how we it, typically. It doesn't start. matter. It it can be done either way, Dan. Sure. Fair enough. Sorry, I have to read from my pad since my computer screen is tied up here. Okay, the first one received by Justin Lightgive of 8 Stonegate Lane to the April, dated April 28th, 2020 to the Village of Pittsburgh Board of Trustees. Thank you for your work on the 2020-21 budget for the Village of Pittsburgh. I am writing in support of the tentative budget that was presented at the budget meeting on April 23rd. While it is clearly an uncomfortable situation to be looking at a tax increase during these difficult times, I am appreciative that most members of the board voted for a tentative budget that is necessary for our village to remain viable. Trustee Keating was the only member who voted against the tentative budget presented at the April 23rd meeting. He instead favors a reduced budget and a further consideration of staff layoffs. In previous budget meetings, all board members have discussed cost-cutting measures at length, including layoffs of the village staff, and further cuts are either not possible given services that the village expects or functions of the New York State that New York State requires of all villages. While the motivation for COVID-19 for budget cuts is the new one this year for all members, I believe that Trustee Keating's opposition to this year's reasonable proposed budget is part of a pattern that began with his service on the board in 2018. I am grateful for the support of the other other members of the board, Mayor Corby, Trustee Galusha, Trustee Lanthier, and Trustee Stetzer in their affirmative vote for a tentative budget. And I urge them to support a reasonable budget for the 2021 fiscal year. Finally, I hope that board considers urging residents to better understand the context of this budget by watching discussions that I have archived on the Pittsburgh Village Videos website, httpittsburgh.villagevideos.com or Facebook page, www.facebook.com, Pittsburgh Village, Pittsburgh Village Videos. Thank you, Justin Lightjum. Any comments or would you like me to continue with the next reading? Continue with the next one, please. Okay. Uh, these are received from Mark Harrington. I'm not sure of Mr. Harrington's address. I know he's a village resident and I'm sorry, I can't pull that out of my brain right at the moment. State Street, I'm not sure what the number is. Okay. Uh, 
It's titled Budget Comments to the Budget Committee of the Board of Trustees of Pittsburgh Village. Congratulations on your budget and its process. This must have been ultimate test of prudence, diligence, and thoughtful solutions this village has ever faced. Within the next few weeks, we may be at the same unemployment level as the Great Depression. Let's all hope not, but we all must plan for the worst. How can budgeting be done properly in the face of this pandemic, which might well extend for some time to come? Answer, we simply do not know. I've been CEO of seven companies for over 40 years, and as such, the buck stopped with me. Not a fun task at times. As trustees, the buck stops with all of you. Now, no question you have pot shots sent your way in droves. Typically, those that throw stones at you very likely come from those that have never faced the level of responsibility all of you have faced with this budget. Excuse their ignorance. They simply do not know. Short-term needs must be met as the villagers village gets squeezed. Concurrently, long-term issues of preserving this unique spot for now and for all future generations is yet another call of capital needs. The deliberations that all of you have taken to get to this point are the consummate of mark of good fiduciary responsibility. Thanks for all you have done. I'm sure that on reflection, you will find that any person voting against this budget is now a thing of the past, past as well as it should as just one resident of our village, but having dealt in workouts for my own account for 40 years. Thanks very much, Mark Harrington. Ready for the next one? Yes. Dave Marshall, and again, I'm sure, Bob, do you know where Mr. Marshall is? I think it's, Main Street. it's South it's Main South Street. Main Street. I'm not Thank sure you. of the number. Okay. Hello, Dorothy and the Board of Trustees. I appreciate the trustees' significant efforts to reach a budget accord and the support, support the budget as drafted. I believe the services provided by the village are expected and that a majority of the residents are willing to cover those costs through higher taxes. In addition, cost of our legal defense are required and therefore increase in tax is also justified. However, it would be helpful to consider legal contracts as drafted with each firm and if cost saving are possible by narrowing the scope of consequences. Compensable work, sorry about that. In addition, I have significant concerns about the persistent deferral of legal fees and the logging of legal expenses into subsequent years. Furthermore, holding short-term liabilities with each firm rather than on a, our list of accountable payable, accounts payable and having specific outstanding liabilities seems disingenuous. disingenuous. I would work to eliminate this practice and put all expenses and liabilities into each year's budget. Sincerely, Dave Marshall. I'm sorry for messing your letter up, Mr. Marshall. Apparently, I can't speak big words tonight. D disingenuous <laughs> is what you were trying to say. There you go. I'm I, glad you could say it. I think you mean disingenuous, but. Disingenuous. Yeah, oh, there you thank, go. Thank okay. you. <laughs> I think we all need it. Yeah, 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 we're all a little frazzled. <laughs> Too much. And I need a long, spirit. tall glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, and that's all the comments I have received. And I believe Dave Ferris requested to speak. So I will unmute him. I'm right there. All in, I got it. There you go, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, Dorothy and, and the board. Uh, as you know, I've listened in on many of the budget meetings and really want to applaud the entire board with the thoughtfulness and detail you've gone into and uh, both Dorothea and Mary's work, it's its a lot. Uh, you don't have any good choices. We don't have any good choices this year. And the uh, COVID uh, virus, its impact is uh, just unprecedented the issues you have to deal with. Uh, I don't know if most people realize that the 18% tax increase proposed by the board uh, to build into the budget last week, 15% of that is represented by loss of sales tax something that we don't have control over could even be greater than that. So aside from that adjustment, really it's a 3% increase uh, separate from replacing revenue from lost sales tax. So it's a very difficult thing. I would like to ask Trustee Keating though, because he voted against an 18% tax increase, what tax increase rate he would support or would propose. Mr. Ferris done? 
Yeah, just a question I posed to you because I didn't hear an alternative proposal in the 18%. You voted against it, the others voted for it. So I thought there might be an alternative that you would propose. I'm wondering what tax rate you would recommend. Uh, I'll defer that until the vote. Uh, will you share then what plan you have to have a different tax rate? Uh, I'll defer that discussion until the vote. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume if you don't share a plan that I guess there is not one, so I'll wait to hear what the plan is. Uh, but again, the entire board and Dan, you're included. I know it's been a lot of work by all of you and I appreciate it. Uh, that's the end of my comments. Good. Okay, thank you, Dave. Anyone else? If others want to talk, put put something in the chat and I'll unmute you. Seems no one else wants to talk. Okay, any comments from the board? Um, Trustee Lanfear, um, I, I would just like to say that personally, it means a great deal to me that we have had um, villagers um, uh, writing emails and, and leaving chat messages that are supportive. It means a great deal because it's just so difficult and such a difficult decision to make. And it's very helpful to feel the support uh, from of, of villagers. Then you feel that you are um, working in their behalf and I appreciate it very much. Before we take a vote, I want to once again um, thank our treasurer and our clerk uh, for the extraordinary amount of effort they have put in to this year's budget. This is certainly uh, the most difficult and lengthiest budget uh, process that I've experienced in my 27 years as mayor. And uh, it's been extraordinarily time consuming and difficult because there aren't any good choices. Um, and uh, the only thing I can say, and I, I don't think any of us are happy where we have ended up. Uh, unfortunately, it's necessary. Uh, the other thing I would like to say is um, we have been extremely thorough in looking at every alternative and vetting every suggestion, good or bad. So, some we've incorporated, some we weren't able to do so. Um, but we have, uh, looked at every suggestion with an open mind to see if, if it would work or not. And, you know, I've lost count of how many budget meetings we've had. I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 or 15. Um, and uh, I've certainly, you know, the number of different budgets that, that Mary has prepared um, is just extraordinary. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really an unreasonable amount of work that she's done. And I think we all owe her uh, a deep deal of, of gratitude. So thank you, thank you, Mary. And thank you also, Dorothea. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. And thank you to all of you for all your hard work and thank you. helping to get this document together. This was my first official um, budget uh, year <laughs> as a trustee. You're done with it, aren't you? <laughs> I, I'm hoping it gets better from here. This is just a horrible year to be working on this. It's an extraordinary year this year. Normally, it's not this difficult, but it it is very difficult this year. I will point out. Mary pointed out to me today that her hair was the same color as mine when this started. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. That was just a few months ago. <laughs> Mine's <laughs> gradually working its way, so we'll be twins shortly. <laughs> Obviously, we couldn't do this without Mary. Obviously. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I feel like you've been put through the ringer this year. You had to do this many times, many iterations. It's all right. Thank as you, long Mary. as we get to a final product that everybody's content with. I'm happy with it. <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion to approve the proposed 2020-2021 budget. Do I have a second? Lamp for your second. Any discussion? Okay, 
I, I'll uh, ask Dorothea to call for a roll call vote then. You're muted, Dorothea. Yep. Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. Thank Woo! you. <laughs> Thank we you, have a everyone. Budget. Awesome. Great. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all trustees for bearing with us. I know this was a long, a long path and uh, everybody really uh, was helpful. So I'm very appreciative cool. and uh, let's hope that the, <laughs> the year isn't as bad as it may be. Let's just keep your fingers crossed. Everybody go to the wine cellar now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's Art Pierce texted me. I think he was trying to call in and wasn't able to make a comment. So I, I would like if if he does call in and is able to connect, I would um, give him the floor and the ability to make a comment. I didn't hear um, uh, Mayor Corby. Who was that that was trying to call in? Art Pierce. He he oh, okay. appeared on the screen earlier. He sent yes. me a text. Um, uh, I think he he wanted to speak and wasn't able to call in or get connected for some reason. So. I'll just put that on the record that he he did express an interest in saying something. I will let you know you have a chat message. Congrats, great effort, everyone, from Dave Marshall. Oh, thank you, Dave. And he also sent his address, so. I'm glad he knows where he was, because none of us do. <laughs> yeah, 67. So. There's that tax record we could look up. <laughs> Okay, uh, next item we have is uh, we need a resolution to extend uh, Mary Morowski's employment. Dorothea, do you remember what we discussed the other day? Um, we discussed right now, obviously trying to hire during a pandemic is quite difficult. Um, Mary will be doing the work to finalize this budget. She'll be working with our auditors to again to do year end as we go forward uh correct me if i'm wrong you mary you do not anticipate needing to be here as much as recent weeks that is You're correct. looking to take some time off and she's hoping to cover me so i can immediately get a few days. i'm not <laughs> yeah i'll uh, loosen I'm the chain that we authorize mary through november uh first uh, the reason is because it's going to be difficult to hire probably in the at least in the next two months um the tax season and then preparing the finals for this year's budget and the aud report which occurs in august is technically complex it's also a pretty heavy workload obviously we're going to need mary for that we're also going to need her, her for a few consecutive months to train the new person whoever hopefully we hire uh for the treasurer's position so that that would give us a, a a time frame to do all that and we can reevaluate that and see if mary is fed up with us at that time but i would authorize uh keeping mary part-time uh as we have discussed previously through november 1st 2020. so is that is there a maximum uh number of hours um with the definition of part-time or? Uh, there is, we had discussed that before. Uh, Dorothea, could you remember, remind me what that is? Um, part-time in our workload is 35 and under. Um, I would refer to Mary. I believe she can give us the best detail what she thinks we're gonna need till we get the full-time person Mary had in. a number in the budget, which is what we should go by. I think it was I 20. Would, yes, I was looking at 20, uh, where's Max? Okay. Yeah, we'll be leaving work on the table to get done, but that that Mary could take some time off potentially in the next month when we anticipate things will be quiet, but then there may be weeks later on where she may be here uh, more than 20 hours a week. So I, I think it's uh, it will give her some flexibility, and it'll be based on the needs of what actually has to happen in the office. But our budget is based on 20 hours uh, per week. <clears throat> Average. Yeah. Okay. That, that is correct. That is okay. correct. Yes. And and we will stay within that number. Okay. Yeah, I will say probably under that number just to 
do the critical work that's really needed to get by and and uh, save something for the new person so they could practice. <laughs> I will second that motion, Trustee Lambert. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, I'll ask for a vote. Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Lanfear. Lanfear, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Thank okay, you, everyone. Ne next item, we have a discussion about non-essential employees. This is from the clerk. Yes, first off, I believe all our employees are essential. I don't like that label. <laughs> it's a label. <laughs> That's good. I almost said that. that yeah, sounds so it's a label sad. being given through the coronavirus crisis to really label part-time yeah. staff, you know, work that it's essential, but it's not essential during a pandemic. I think that's the best I, way to look at it. That's our part-time workers, which some we have let stay home due to family concerns. Um, they're at risk for the virus. There was very thing, many things we talked about back in March. The board made a motion back in March to continue their employment, allow them to work from home or however we could to make sure they get paid through the end of April. Believe it or not, we're at the end of April. And even reviewing that, I I was stunned to think that even then we thought, oh, it might be better in a couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. So my proposal to the board, these people, the, these employees, and I'm hoping to meet with them tomorrow, have been, like Linda, she's been doing minutes and believe it or not, all these meetings, even though we have the audio visual, have to be done in transcription as well. And there's no getting around that. I've tried every way possible and I'm not the only clerk doing that, but word for word for every meeting has to be recorded. That's a lot of time and effort and I'm having, I'm having Linda do that. I can have our parking monitor do that. He's got computer skills and I can have, I know Sophie's been working on her records policies and other things. I can have her move to do that. We have plenty of work to keep them busy because every one of these two hour meetings is gonna take a week to type up and review. Even though I get a transcription from this, it has to be edited to make sure it's accurate. And trust me, it does need to be reviewed because some of the comments come back, it's not what you said. It's quite interesting to go through that transcript, actually. It's quite laughable. Um, so I'm proposing to keep them working like that until the stay. Currently, hearing from the governor today, it still looks like we're on a plan to start opening slowly regional as of May 15th. I believe that's what we were hearing. Um, I believe we can start bringing those staff members back in and rotating hours with everybody and making sure everybody gets what they need or if they can work at home at those various jobs. So if the board's comfortable in continuing that process, I don't foresee Mike being able to get out doing parking tickets enforcement until probably June, depending on what's happening with the openings of businesses and everything else. Yeah, and Dorothea, I'm happy to help every now and then if if you want me to do some transcribing, that's work I don't mind doing. If it'll save us a few bucks, I'm happy to do it. Um, honestly, I, you know, I rather we have these employees. I want to use them if they they want to work. That's the thing. They don't want to sit home. They don't want to be home. They, we're kind of in a stuck because we're trying to do what's safe and best for everybody involved. So. We have work, and I know Steve could probably use Mike on some projects. Zach might be able to use Mike on projects out in the field. Sophie will really will be going back out to flowers on May 15th. Around then, we anticipate the flowers going up, and she needs to get the beds cleaned up and everything else. So there is work to be done. Linda's been doing minutes, and I know her Historic Preservation Board has a meeting coming up on the 11th. I'm going to be working with them so they can do this same platform with the video conference. So the work is starting to pick up a little bit where we can bring them in, but we want to do it safely. Dorothy, this is Trustee Lamb here for clarification, is what you are asking the board is to continue in the same fashion that you have been operating for the past several weeks. Yes, that's what I'm asking to keep going. I have work for them. 
they'll be working from home. Um, I can update you at our next meeting on May 12th. I believe that is the date. And we'll uh, be the close only, to the... Um, one, one change just to make everybody aware. At some point, probably sometime in May, Sophie will come in to do her outside work with social distancing. That doesn't seem to be a problem because usually she comes in earlier than the rest of the crew and works by herself. Um, she would also be maintaining the flowers when the flowers come in, which we have already purchased. This is Trustee Lamphere. I will make a motion that we accept the uh, terms that have been suggested by the village clerk for the continued employment of our non-essential uh, non to the COVID crisis employees. I would call them part-time essential workers. Okay, part-time essential work, non-essential workers to the COVID-19 crisis. They are okay. essential, but they're not essential to the crisis. I think that's what Dorothea was pointing out. Yeah, yep. it is. Yep. Okay, I'll uh, second Lily's motion. Uh, would you call for a vote, Dorothea, please? Yep, Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphier. Lamphier, aye. Mayor Corby? Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. And I gotta, I have to follow this up. This is a request. This is coming in from DPW. It's affecting all staff. With given the situation with the virus and the way we've had to rotate crews, we have a need to keep them fresh and plans have had to be changed. We're asking that we allow the crew to carry over 40 hours of vacation time and their anniversary date. I'm requesting that the board give them an additional four months to use that, all their vacation time. So and we, normally they we, get a year. We're asking that so it, they don't all bunch up and you know everybody asking for vacation time in July and August when we need the work done. Correct. It would help ease the vacation schedule and give them an opportunity to use their time because they're just really not going to because we've had to delay things. This is Trustee Lanfear. Is that is that uh, would that require a change to their contract, to their union contract? No. Okay. No, because we're extending it. We're not restricting it any. I I would be highly doubtful that the union would come back and say no. Don't give them extra time to use their accrued time that okay. it's to the benefit. Okay. Was the motion made? Nope. I will make that motion then. Uh, I'll second Lily's motion. Vote. Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Okay, and that's all I have. I, I just want to make a comment. Um, I did receive another text message from Art Pierce, and Art wanted to um, express his sentiment about his support for the proposed budget and uh, wishes that that, that uh, would be included as part of the record. Okay. Okay. Next item we have uh, is the continuation of the public hearing for the Pittsburgh pub. I guess that is tabled for now, Dorothea. Uh, Jeff, I guess my question to you is, should they make another motion to table it out to April 12th? Yes. I mean, May 12th? Yes. Okay, okay I'll make a motion to uh, table the application of uh, for a uh, Alteration to their special Bob, permit. Bob, can I interrupt? You're, yes. you're making a motion to continue the public hearing to May 12th. Okay, so moved. Second. We have a second. Dan. Trustee Keating seconded. Okay, okay. All right. Call for a vote. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, aye. Mayor Corby? Or B I. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. 
Motion okay. passes. Uh, next item we have our DPW summer hours authorizing from June 1st, uh, 2020 uh, to September 11th, 2020. I How believe is, Frank was going to speak to that. Okay. I was going to say, is Frank, this impacted by? Last year, last year we we reinstated summer hours at the request of the DPW staff. We we reinstated it on the condition that the board review it every year and approve summer hours every year. Last year the uh the crew were very successful in maintaining summer hours without a loss of uh, a loss of service to our residents and so it is without any reservation do i recommend that the board reinstate summer hours for this year for the dates mentioned by Mayor Corby. Thank you, Frank. Uh, this I'll is... make a motion to reinstate summer hours as as um, Dan or Bob. Okay. Bob, hold on a minute. We have. Yep. We have I have one question, uh, Trustee Stetzer. Uh, Frank, how um, if we're continue having to continue with social distance practices uh, longer than we anticipate through the summer? Does, how does that impact? They're already sort of spacing out and almost on a reduced schedule already. So um, I, I can we... address that, Renee. Okay. Frank and I met with Zach on Monday. Um, we're, we're going to meet with him next week. Uh, we talked about uh, when the governor lifts the current order of bringing the full crew back on full time. And uh, we asked Zach to come up with a plan uh, to safely isolate two crews to minimize interaction and implement other safeguards so we protect our staff while all are working so uh, full time. Uh, for example, you know, perhaps either staggering lunchtime so they're not all in the break room together at one time, or perhaps one crew works at each lunch at Village Hall and the other each lunch at the garage. But um, that's what we're, we're we're meeting again next Monday, and have asked uh, Zach to present Frank and I uh, with a plan for how we're going to do this. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, uh, we have a motion on the floor. Did we have a second? I'll second it, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Uh, uh, Dorothea, would you call for a vote? Trustee Keating. Keating, aye. Trustee Lamphere. Lamphere, aye. Trustee uh, Mayor Corby. Corby, aye. Trustee Galusha. Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer. Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. Okay. Last item, uh, Jeff Turner wanted to give us an update on CCA. And then I have one more thing after that. Okay. So the next step in this whole process is the preparation of the electrical supply agreement which is going to go out as part of an RFP to the electric suppliers uh, in terms of them providing us with a bid they need to see that document before they do the bid the critical part of that is during these negotiations not really even negotiations during the discussions regarding the ESA with Jewel um, we sort of tumble on to the fact that 100% renewable energy doesn't necessarily mean 100% renewable energy in the strictest sense of that word. So there, there is renewable energy that goes into the grid. It goes into the grid with, along with every other kind of energy, fossil fuel, generated energy, nuclear generated energy. What happens is when it comes into the grid, there are renewable energy certificates that these energy companies buy. So when you are buying into a 100% renewable energy plan, it means that 
the energy that went in that is allocated to your customers what is 100% renewable i mean some of the other attorneys were a little taken aback by that but it makes perfect sense to me unless you have a closed system with lots of batteries there is no way to generate reliable renewable energy at this stage in our technology mm -hmm. so while it's a blend, what is being allocated to your customers in the village will be, its source will be 100% renewable. Does that make some sense? Yes. Yeah, they can't control what electrons end up at your house. Well, I, that made sense to me, but some of the other attorneys were a little taken aback. Yeah, the, yeah, words bait and the, the words bait and switch were used. I um, think the, the overall principle is that by doing this, we're increasing the demand for new renewables and the principle still uh, still holds value. Well, not only that, as part of the ESA agreement, um, there's a, a an addendum which talks about, for instance, if a big farm went in in Farmington, not mm -hmm. a pun, no pun intended, a big right. solar farm went in, in- A big solar in, farm, right. Right, in, in Farmington, then Jewel, could force the electrical supplier to use that energy. So in that way, the renewable suppliers are incented to continue developing their products. The other thing that is in the agreement that may be changing is that it was a 12 month look back period. So that they that the average energy cost had to beat the 12 month average. Well, it, it turns out that because of this pandemic and the lowering of uh, oil and natural gas prices, it may be re necessary to do a longer look back period. So, I mean, again, some of the attorneys were a little taken aback by that, but I, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do to try to get the price right to encourage renewable energy, I think, but that'll be up to the board to decide, you know, whether the look back period is going to be 12 or 24 or 36 to try to get, actually get bids in from the energy suppliers to supply according to the ESA and CCA. Did, did that make sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So those are the two updates um, that I thought were important. I think we've got the agreement in a place we're all comfortable with. Uh, we've asked the Jewel guy to come up with a memorandum that we can pass along to our respective boards to explain why the, the look back period might change. So when I get that, you'll get it. Um, the next step in this process will be that you'll do some kind of resolution approving the form of the agreement and indicating that if a if a bid comes in that fits the parameters of the program, you'll sign the contract, which really is the only way, given the fact that electricity is like a commodity, you, you, the price changes all the time. Um, that contract, the, the the people who bid on the contract need to know they're going to get the deal done within an X number of days to make it work. How can we do that without having brought it to the people? So I, I agree with you in, in principle. Yeah, let's get the thing signed. But we really haven't had a kind of a public information session about this. We really haven't gotten feedback. I think there I, is I, another public information sch scheduled, isn't there, once we get close to this? Because there's an opportunity. Well, I may Go be ahead, operating yeah. under a misapprehension, but I thought there were public information sessions ongoing there there two have been held so far in the village two two of them correct there was two I don't know if that, is that what you're talking about dan is that i mean i'm not sure i understand your question dan i remember we did it we did a session at sutherland and it was very well attended at the very beginning of this and um isn't there one at Village Hall too? There, there's been two at Village Hall, Renee. Okay. All right. 
Yep. <laughs> yep. But but I think what Dan is getting to, and and I may be wrong, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, is everyone is going to have an opportunity not to say yes to this. Correct. So you know, but if I it's a deal that nobody wants, if they want to save that 0.0034 cents to to get the best deal they can rather than renewable energy, they have the opportunity to do that. Well, I should add though that, that you as a board could eliminate that, that as a possibility if you chose to. They either people would stay with RG and E or they would go into the CCA with no choice but to accept 100% renewable energy. That and that would be a decision up to your board. As, it, as Jewel explained it to us, they thought there was some appeal to elected officials to allow people to keep some kind of choice here. I think so. Essentially, are. they have three choices: RG&E, um, the non-renewable blend, and the 100% renewable. I think the more choices we offer people, I think that's probably what most people would want. Uh, how does everybody else feel? I, I speaking of this trustee Lamphere, speaking for myself, I think that I would find that the most attractive option to be able to have three choices, one or the other or a blend of the two. If that's available, I think that sounds an obvious. We're, yes. we're giving people options they don't presently have, and I think that that certainly seems to make sense. I agree with Dan that when we finally approve this, we should have probably a, a hearing, and so people have another opportunity to weigh in. That's all I'm saying. Yes. Just, yeah. I, kind of, I think just before the final, just before the final signature, that kind of thing. Yes. If you're going to do that, you should probably invite somebody from Jewel to help you field questions. Because yes, they're, they, they're going to be yeah, much better. Yeah, I, I would think we would invite, invite them and we'd have another information summary and then an opportunity for people to, you know, have them answer the questions because I'm sure they'll handle it better than we could. Okay. All right. Anything else yep. on that, Jeff? Not on that. Uh, we can talk a little bit about green light and first light if you would like to. Oh, but yes, please, please give us an update. Um, so. And Dorothea spoke to a representative today, and if I get anything wrong, Dorothea, you'll correct me. Uh, we've been going back and forth. That's probably not accurate. We have been in dialogue with First Light. Uh, we sent them um, an agreement similar to what we have done with Greenlight. Um, they wanted to push back on the percentage. Uh, both Dorothy and I gave them the same message, which is generally the board would like to treat everybody the same way um and of course we both said subject to the board making a final decision uh and also you should know that in the green light contract which has not been signed but in the green light contract it says that if we offer a better deal to any other telecommunications company green light gets the benefit of that deal and I've had inquiries from the guy at Greenlight as to whether or not we've entered into any such agreements and they want to know who else we've had agreements with. Um, so th those those two deals are still being worked out. Uh, Dorothea was very clear with a woman from First Light that we simply could not have them working in our village until we resolve this and get an agreement with them. Uh, I, and I think that should be the same position we take with any future work by Greenlight. Then until we get the last contract resolved and a new contract for the new work, uh, because the old contract is very street specific, that we really shouldn't let them be doing work on, in the village without that contract. I agree. Agreed. Similarly, Jeff, um, to... Uh 
Does the first light contract have the same revenue share clause that the green light contract does? And if not, can we request it? Um, well, the first light the standard there, operating procedure in the village. There is no real contract for first light yet. I sent them a word version uh, of the green light contract with green light redacted where appropriate. And that agreement does call for the same rate. It's a 5% rate. That's the maximum permitted by the FCC. So, I mean, I I just can't imagine in these times that we would want to figure think about doing less than that for telecommunications. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a board decision. Yeah. So, so there, the sample does include the revenue share. Yes. Good. Well, let's make sure that's in the first light if we can. Definitely push. Well, it that. has to be, or we don't get it for green light. Oh, that's right. Yeah, good point. Um, so Dorothy is uh, Dorothea. Who did? You, who else is doing business in our village? Did you think? I would believe that we would have contracts with Spectrum, maybe or Frontier. I'm not sure. I would assume any of their phone companies or internet providers would have a contract with us. I could be well, wrong. Uh, I would assume that went into play before I came. And if we don't have contracts, we should. Correct. Well, we do get, um, what do we get, Mary? We get the franchise fee from uh, Spectrum? From Spectrum, yeah, it's the 5%. Do we, we don't get a franchise fee from Frontier or do we? We do. We do. We do. Okay. Yeah, we do. So I would anticipate there has to be we something agree. in agreement. I think there. Yeah. I think there is an agreement. I, if, I'd have to look, but I'm pretty sure there was one done a while ago. Probably. Well, we ought to we ought to catch that up because the the, yeah. the other important part about the agreement is the indemnification and insurance pieces, and that's pretty critical. Mm-hmm. So I, th I think we're all in agreement, Jeff, that we shouldn't allow them to do any work until we have a signed agreement with them. Dorothy, are you comfortable telling uh, Steve and Zach that, that they can act on that direction? Absolutely. Okay. Good. That'll be helpful okay. to everybody. Anything uh, else? Real quick. Yeah. Can I ask really quick, is the board comfortable with me telling what I told First Light, they are more than welcome to present something to the board for their response? But my sense of the board is that they're not going to be willing to change the treat any individual company different than they would treat another company, that they're going to look for the same rate for everyone. Yeah. So I, I at this time, fair. the 5% is where they're at. So yeah. I mean, not to discourage them, but I'd rather give them, you know, the best message I can. I mean, that raises a point. I mean, it doesn't raise a point. It reminds me of, of something that First Light woman said who said, she was very shocked that we would consider taking 5%, which is kind of strange because it appears to be an industry-wide standard. I, you know, I'm, I was just surprised. Well, Anyhow. What, what better strategy than to see how naive the little village is? Perhaps. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Have her watch um, the, all the recordings from our last 14 budget meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, it's not nice. <laughs> you know, you really don't. You don't know this woman, Renee, but you're that. You're not, you're being that mean to her. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, I was just letting her, just shedding some light into our our situation, and maybe she'll be a little more understanding. Sympathetic, Sympathetic yeah. right? Okay, no, long, the board, long as the board's comfortable with me giving that message. Yeah. That's all I've got. Okay, Dan, do you add something? Uh, Mary, real quick, can you remind me what what kind of income we get off those franchise fees? Can you ballpark it? Offhand, I don't know, but I yeah. I do have a grid that I do keep. I could forward that to you in the morning. Okay, that'd be great. Or Just, even tonight. Yeah. I think that my computer is We are like we are collecting it for Spectrum and for Frontier. Yes. Frontier, right? Periodically, we update our agreement with spectrum I, yeah. I don't remember the last time we did it with frontier so that might be something we should take a look at okay okay so the i i have two items to add Dan, can, I, Dan, can i interrupt for two seconds sure. yeah 
Mary, do we get anything from those two companies that would verify that the, the money they're sending us is the right amount of money? I uh, no, without agreement. I'm not even sure that we're getting anything from either of those two companies. Don't, I don't really don't we get a copy of the we get an income statement along with it, don't we? Showing their revenues. That I know showing. we do with like with our genie and those, but and I think we do with the franchise fees as well. The franchise fee. Like, the gross yeah. receipts, the gross receipts we do. Not always. I think we get with both. I think we get with both. All right. I could be dead wrong, but I think we get with both. No, so when you look for the contracts, when you look for the contracts, will you just be sure we're getting some kind of documentation that, that what they're sending us is the right number? I remember with our GE, we had a five year period where they were shorting us and we got finally got caught up. I'm sorry, Dan, that's all I had. Okay. Um I have I have two items to cover and they're both related to legal fees. Um, one of them is um, pretty much a no-brainer to me. We, Jeff, I love you, and you didn't speak for the first hour and 15 minutes of this. Since he's the only billable person on the phone call, I'm hoping for future meetings we could just get his stuff. If we don't need him for anything else, if we could just kind of just get his stuff out of the way. Yeah. Is that possible? Stack, stack everything we need, Jeff, for at the beginning. Yeah, uh, we, we normally try to do that. I, I think tonight's meeting, we kept adding things to the agenda, so it didn't, it, it ended up being quite a bit longer than I expected it to be. But generally, we do try to get Jeff in and out unless yeah. there's something sensitive at the end. So, yeah. So, so the okay. way, the way, the way Bob and I have generally handed it, Bob, if you don't mind sp me speaking to yeah. it. Nope. Is I will call Bob the day of the meeting. We'll take a look at the agenda. And we'll try to get me there at a time when we think a lot of the stuff has gotten out of the way that I wouldn't wouldn't speak to. And then in that way, we try to be a little more concise. I assume we could be even more concise than that, except my experience is over the years that often things come up that we don't know you're going to need a legal question for. Now, you can handle that by writing them down, making a note and contacting me later. Yeah. Thank you. And Jeff, I said I love you, and you didn't say I love you too, but that's okay. Wait a minute, you didn't see my virtual hug? <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, it's getting oh, what is happening? The second thing, um, so the second thing, thing is too much really wine. affecting There's not me. enough wine here. <laughs> wow. The second thing is, um, I just find it really strange that Hudson Russ held their bills until now. I, I find it really weird. I've never had an hourly vendor hold most of their bills for an entire year. So I just want to make sure nobody, none, none of the trustees or anybody in the office staff is instructing them to hold their bills to a certain time, are they? I'm not we empowered did, to do that. We did ask to hold them off because we didn't know where things were going and we knew we were going to have to have some agreement in the end. Uh, so we, we did actually, and uh, we can dig it out in the minutes. I know there was a discussion in a board meeting where we talked about that, and I was instructed to call Hodgson Russ, which I did, um, and, and this goes way back. So we're, we're gonna have to sort through the minutes to find it, because I don't remember the date, but I, I do remember the sequence of events pretty clearly. So we instructed them to hold, to not send bills through the year, but send them just at budget time? Well, we, we instructed them to hold them off. We, we were at a point, Dan, where we had a cash flow issue and we, we weren't gonna be able to handle all the bills in that quarter uh, and have enough cash flow. Did Bob freeze for anybody else? Yes. Yeah, he's frozen. Yeah. Yep. Um, let me yell up to him, hold on. Yeah. It's okay. We we can cover this at the next meeting. It's 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 not urgent. So when do we think that decision was made? Was it this last year, or would it have been, um, would it have been 2019 or, like? I don't I don't have a memory. This is Trustee Lanfear. Yeah. I, I, just, I don't have a memory of it in the last year. I'm okay. gonna. I it sounds like more like it was. 
That's I mean, if, if anything, so if I'm we, digging through the minutes, where should I start? Should I look in 2018 or 2019? I would look in 2018, but it doesn't, it's not ringing a bell with me. So. It, it's not ringing a bell with me either. And I, I just okay. can't is, see a scenario where saying, we wouldn't want to plan um, our cash better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do feel a little blindsided by it um, for they're all coming at once, all the, the bills at once. So yeah. we got 17,000 kind of early in the fiscal year. And then we got 160,000 at the end of the fiscal year. And, and we just need to smooth that out better. And, and, if, and if that means then that we have to set up a payment schedule, we do that. I just don't like getting hit all at once. And it made the budgeting process harder this year. So I, I would like to see the monthly, if not monthly, then quarterly. It, it gives us no visibility into how we're managing them. We were blind all year as to how much money we had spent with them. Yeah. Um, that's how that's how we track it. And we certainly might have made some cutbacks if we knew we were spending that that amount of money. I did request that they would uh, send us monthly bills as they were incurred so that we could just do the, just that thing to keep yeah, a better track on it. Yeah. You requested that I, I going forward or this last year? Mary? Going going forward. OK, so that's new. So hopefully forward, yeah. so hopefully we've solved that issue going forward. Okay, I, I would like to make that our stance that we do not ask people to hold their bills in any way. I, I think particularly around the legal set, um, the legal work, we want monthly bills from all of our vendors on that. Yes. There's no other way to manage it yeah. properly. Even if we end up needing to work out a payment schedule or defer it, right. um, knowing what we have ahead of us is uh, only smart. Yeah. So it sounds like Mary's already requested monthly statements. Yep, and and I'll make that a point as well. Um, you know, I think you guys heard me throughout the years say, hey, we still don't have a Hodgson Rust bill. Uh, you know, I comment these all the time. I'll, I'll make it a point to request it. And, if and we, we started asking for them. Um, I just want to add to this. We months ago, and yeah. you know, it was call after call until we finally lit a fire and got them to to, to dump them all on us. So, um, you know, we, but I don't we, we understand did... it. So th that's conflicting to what you said earlier. What you said earlier was we asked them to hold them. We did. There was a, there was a point. I'm trying to remember what it was that caused it. I I don't remember if it was last fall when we got the extra bills on the comp plan, but I know there was a quarter. Uh, where we had a cash flow problem and we asked them to hold off because we weren't, weren't going to be able to to make the payments. Uh, I, I'd have to go back and look at it because I, I just off the top of my head, I don't remember. OK, and to be clear, I don't want to I don't want to ever do that kind of thing again, even if we're having a cash flow issue. And I would still rather have the invoice, know what we need to pay and then create a plan to pay it rather than go blind until well well i think especially nice. now dan because we're going to have a payment plan that we're going to watch it very carefully to see where we are because our goal is to get rid of these liabilities okay, okay. all right anything else any other comments okay i'll make a motion to adjourn do i have a second i'll second the motion Keenan. okay Dorothea, would you call for a vote? Sure. Mayor Corby? Yes. Trustee Lamphere? Lamphere, aye. Trustee Keating? Keating, aye. Trustee Galusha? Trustee Galusha, aye. Trustee Stetzer? Stetzer, aye. Motion passes. Dan, can you hit the record stop button for me, please? Yeah, will do. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.